If you've been craving stronger, more sculpted legs or looking to elevate your overall fitness, you're in the right place. We've curated 10 indispensable tips that you simply can't afford to ignore. But before we move on, make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Leg curls do only part of the job in recruiting the hamstrings. For example, the supine leg curl involves the biceps femoris, semitendinosus, sartorius and gracilis, the semi-stiff leg deadlift and the good morning involve the adductor magnus, adductor brevis, biceps femoris and semitendinosus. Therefore, your hamstring workouts should involve exercises for both the hip extension function, good morning and semi-stiff leg deadlift and the knee flexor function, seated and prone leg curl. It appears that the dominant leg of some athletes will often be as much as 20% stronger than the non-dominant leg. Also, because of a neurological effect called the bilateral deficit, the hamstrings will contract harder if they are trained one leg at a time. This means the knees must be extended, and the hips flexed in the starting position. Thus, during the standing leg curl, you would need to bend forward from the waist and start with the legs straight before lifting. Stretching the quadriceps, which is the antagonist of the hamstrings, is one way to increase your range of motion, because this will reduce muscle tension that can shorten the muscle. Eccentric training refers to the lowering portion of an exercise, as opposed to concentric training, which refers to the lifting portion. The hamstrings respond well to eccentric work. Because of the high fast twitch composition of the hamstrings, there is little point in training with higher repetitions. Achieving a balance between the medial and lateral parts of the hamstrings, is crucial for leg development and injury prevention. Incorporate exercises targeting both aspects, like hamstring curls and deadlift variations. Balance strength and flexibility with unilateral exercises and stretching, to avoid imbalances that could impact performance and increase injury risks. Variety is an essential requirement for maximal hamstring development, because each exercise offers a unique pattern of overload. There is plenty of empirical evidence that muscles trained early in a workout make greater progress than the ones trained at the end of a workout. The hamstrings have a high fast twitch makeup and thus take a long time for recovery. To comply with the unloading principle, if one lowers the volume after the third week yet keeps up or even increases the intensity, supercompensation will be of a greater magnitude than if the volume was kept constant. Incorporate my 10 tips into your routine, and you'll immediately begin to see and feel the results. Keep in mind that optimal hamstring development requires more than just a few sets of leg curls at the end of your workout. To take your training to the next level of development, make training the hamstrings a priority in your training, and work them as hard as you would your arms or chest. If you have any lingering questions about health and fitness, feel free to drop them in the comment section, I'm here to help you on your wellness journey.